So you know material was taken out. Mm. Most likely the material was tested. But there is no data available whatsoever on the result of those tests. And if it was tested, would they be able to see if it was also silica based, carbon and silica? And they would. Control? They would definitely be able to see if it was a uh, typical DNA strand of beings that are from this planet or not. The, yeah, that was the bust. It, it's a statue of Nefertiti. This one here. This is a statue of an entity that shows that she had a skull similar. So, is that the, the, uh, the writing of cotton film about the same long head? Yes. Yeah. Um, Are these skulls related to the mummies that were found in China? No. No. These skulls were found in South America and Mexico. Um, here is some of the Mexican skulls. The early ones were South American skulls. Um, this one actually has a larger volume than the comb head. And uh, this one is the largest volume ever found. Uh, Mexico. And uh, the facial features are missing but the skull is intact and it's enormous. That's the eye sockets, so you can imagine how large that forehead was. And here is the, uh, the uh, each lobe, uh, each hemisphere of the skull, of the brain, seemed to have developed independently in this case. And uh, making it enormous. Go ahead. On the prior slide, uh, mm. am I correct in saying that the, uh, the orbits of the eyes are a good deal larger than normal? Oh, yeah. Much larger than normal. This person had huge eyes. And there's all sorts of features on these skulls that are not normal. For instance, in these cases, many of the feature, facial features in the jaws don't belong to a normal sapien. They're a mix between various species that uh, are not supposed to be mixed together. Here is Tutankhamen. Even Tutankhamen seemed to have a larger than expected skull. Here is his brother as well. Now, uh, <laughs> there is many instances in the Egyptian and the Mayan and the Inca uh, scripts where they describe that the sun god, including in the Bible, where they describe that the sun gods actually mixed and had children with men, with women uh, of the human species. And that that generated a whole new species which was half sun god, half man. So here, these might be evidence of this alt, you know, altered species, of this mix. And you would expect that these people would become pharaohs because they would have all sorts of capacity that the average man didn't. So here, we're starting to see a whole new picture of the, of the history of human beings. And in, mingled in that picture is the information that these sun gods tried to give to man. And that we are rediscovering at this time. It became clear to me eventually that the sun gods must have been sun gods for a reason. They were called sun gods in all these civilizations, just the same. Well, if the universe is 
different scales black holes, then in order for these sun gods to travel through space from one side of the galaxy to the other, they would have to enter the wormhole, the singularity at the center of those, sun, of those black holes. So they would use stars as gateways to go from one side of the galaxy to the other. And then you would expect them to be called sun gods. That is why, for instance, the ancient tradition in most of these countries talks about the sun as the doorway to the higher realm where the sun gods come from. They talk about the black hole at the center of our galaxy as the hub, the central sun from which you can access all of the stars in the galaxy. So you would enter the sun and then through to the galactic center, out one of the arms of the galaxy, out one of the sun, in the other in another arm of the galaxy. This is the sun as it looks normally. On the sun appears sunspots. These are sunspots. Actually, there are sunspots seen at the X-ray range level. So they appear very bright. Actually, sunspots in the uh, optical uh, spectrum are very dark. They're like black. Well, they appear when the sun becomes very active at 19.47 latitude north and south. Okay? And when you look at the sunspot carefully, and I picked this one because it's, I believe that sunspots are at the heart of the matter. <laughs> uh, when you look at it carefully, you can see that the bl that the that the the fire is being sucked in. That's what made me think, actually, from my calculation and from my theory and all this, that the sunspot on the sun are not surface events but there are huge vortices going to the middle of the sun. The, are, the other reason, can you see the fire being sucked in here? I got in a lot of trouble for saying that. Because they said, no, 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 it's just surface event. And I said, well, if it's just surface event, how come, uh, how come if you look at the sunspots, on the sun, they always occur in opposite polar. See, this one here got an opposite one there. These three there have an opposite three there. You see, all the sunspot occurs in opposition to each other because when you have a vortex going one way in the Coriolis effect, you have another one going the other way on the other side. And they generate a, a link at the middle, a link at singularity. Sunspots are huge vortices going towards singularity at the center of the black hole. And that's why when you look at sunspots very carefully, you see fire being sucked in. 
the sunspots are actually break through the event horizon of the black hole of the sun where you can actually see the, the collapsing black hole pulling the electromagnetic field in. Well, when I was saying this, I was being ridiculed. Recently, this is what they found. Often plasma hurricanes were one of the surprises revealed when scientists recently peered beneath the stormy surface of our star. <laughs> November 7, 2001. Using techniques similar to medical ultrasound, scientists appeared inside the sun and discovered what lies beneath sunspots. 